We begin tonight with dirty deeds, the ones we know about from the president's former fixer, an attorney who today escaped what he calls the personal and mental incarceration of being loyal to Donald Trump, trading it for actual prison. But also the potential dirty deeds we don't know about, but may soon because other people very close to Donald Trump are talking, are cooperating, and they were in the business of buying the president's secrets and burying them. Those people have seemingly set down the shovels. Today, Michael Cohen was sentenced to three years behind bars for crimes, including lying to Congress, tax fraud, and campaign violations tied to payments to two women who said they had affairs with the president. In his sentencing hearing in New York this afternoon, Cohen characterized it like this, and I quote, Recently, the president tweeted a statement calling me weak, and it was correct, but for a much different reason than he was implying. It was because time and time again, I felt it was my duty to cover up his dirty deeds. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap? That sort of depends. Some may think $130,000 is a bargain to keep a story about an alleged sexual encounter with a porn star out of the news right before an election. Others may think $150,000 is just the right price to pay to silence a former Playboy model who says she had a months-long affair with a man who would become president. These are just two of the dirty deeds that we know about. Will others come out? That we don't know. We do know that the president and the White House have repeatedly changed their story about these two. Here's what the president said back in April. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? No, no. Why, what Michael, why did Michael Cohen make it if there was no truth around the Well, you have to ask Michael Cohen. Michael's my an attorney, and you'll have to ask Michael Cohen. Do you know where he got the money? A straight up denial, just a straight up lie. He said he didn't know about the payment. We now know that's not true. The president was not telling the truth. In May, I mean, how many times have we said this sentence over the last two years? In May, Rudy Giuliani then spilled the beans on Hannity. Having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman 130000 I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. So, so they, they funneled it through the law firm. Funneled through the law firm and the president repaid it. Oh, I didn't know he did. Yeah. Don't, yeah, wow. Okay, so that was the first time they admitted that. So at that point, the story then became, well, the president not only knew about the payment, forget what we said before, he paid Cohen back for it. But up until then, the White House kept saying that the president didn't know anything about it. There was no knowledge of uh, any payments from the president, and he's denied all of these allegations. Specifically, can I ask, did the president approve of the payment that was made in October of 2016 by his longtime lawyer and advisor, Michael Cohen? Look, the president has addressed these directly and um, made very well clear that uh, none of these allegations are true. No. I've, I've addressed this as far as I can go. Payment. Did he know about the payment at the time? Not that I'm aware of. You haven't answered the subsequent question about whether the president was aware of the $130,000 payment that was made under an agreement in which he is explicitly named to keep Stormy Daniels silent. Can you answer that question? You were asked three weeks ago today and said you weren't aware. Are you aware now? Look, the president has denied the allegations. We've spoken about this issue extensively, and I don't have anything else to add beyond that. Anything beyond that, I would refer you to the outside counsel. Yeah, it's outside counsel. I just counsel. follow up on it. You said on March 7th uh, there was no knowledge of any payments from the president, and he's denied all of these allegations. Were you lying to us at the time, or were you in the dark? Uh, the president has denied and continues to deny the underlying claim. And again, I've given the best information I had at the time. By the way, Sarah Sanders was asked yesterday what she wants her legacy to be. She said she wants to be remembered as, quote, transparent and honest. Let that one sink in for just a moment. Transparent and honest. All right, let's move on. So we know this was important enough to the president to pay off two women, and it was important enough to the president to straight up lie when he said he didn't know about the payment to Stormy Daniels. But now, presto changeo, suddenly it's just no big deal, according to the president. Two days ago, he tweeted, and I'm quoting, so now the Dems go to a simple private transaction, wrongly call it a campaign contribution. 
Okay, keep it honest, it's not the Dems. The Dems have nothing to do with sending Michael Cohen to prison. The president's lawyer has gone to pr is going to prison. The president calls it a simple private transaction. Again, let's remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about hush money, money paid to keep women quiet. Within the words of the Southern District of New York, the intent to influence the election. And if it's just a simple private transaction, why would the president feel the need to lie about it? Yesterday, the president spoke to Reuters and said, quote, number one, it wasn't a campaign contribution. If it were, it's only civil. And even if it's only civil, there was no violation based on what we did, okay? Keep it honest, the president doesn't get to decide what is and is not a violation, okay? Okay, Michael Cohen is going to prison for this, and the Cohen part of things might in the end pale in comparison to something else that we learned today, an immunity deal with American Media Incorporated, the parent company, the National Enquirer. The agreement says the company won't be prosecuted in exchange for cooperating with prosecutors and admitting that in, it participated in the Cohen payment to silence Karen McDougal, quote, in concert with the candidate's presidential campaign to silence her before the election so that it didn't influence the election. Now, one thing we don't know is what else, if anything, AMI helped hide. We do know the company's chairman, David Pecker, who again was provided immunity, was interviewed by prosecutors. We also know that Mr. Pecker and Donald Trump have been friends since the 1990s. And so just like that, the so-called simple and private transaction, it gets a whole lot less simple and certainly a whole lot less private. Welcome to USA News Today. Please subscribe and check notification box to get all breaking news alerts and latest updates on hot cases. Our vision, the opinion, and the other opinion.